Welcome to the wonderful world of astronomy. This is chapter seven on our planetary system. Part two, we're going to look at the inner solar system. And here you see, once again, the layout of the planets. And we can see the inner solar system refers to the sun and these first four planets. You have Mercury zooming around very fast, and then Venus, and then this blue one, Earth, and then Mars. They are the inner solar system. We're going to start with the sun. I'm just going to give a little bit of information on the sun because when we get to the unit on stars, when we get to chapter 14, uh, that whole chapter is devoted to the sun and the processes that go on inside it. But just a little bit here, the sun is the most prominent object in the solar system. It is by far the largest and most massive thing in the solar system. It contains more than 99.9% .9 of the solar system's mass. It is composed 98% of hydrogen and helium plasma. And remember that plasma is basically a gas, but it's been ionized. It's hot enough in there to have the electrons have been stripped away from the atoms. So hydrogen, helium, plasma. Every second that goes by, the sun transforms 600 million tons or 600 megatons of hydrogen into 596 megatons of helium. So it's continuously losing mass. Every second, it loses 4 million tons of mass. Where does that mass go? Well, remember, we've talked about uh, in an earlier chapter by Einstein's equation, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, that mass can be converted into energy. And this is where the heat and the light, all the energy comes from in the sun. It's that transforming hydrogen into helium and losing mass in the process. Uh, you see some pictures down below. You see a picture just of the outer, the surface of the sun, and you can see some flares coming from that, some material being ejected. And here's a close-up of a sunspot. And again, when we get to chapter 14, we'll talk a lot more about those. There's a picture of the sun with some unusually large prominences, a prominence right here and little ones right there. Here's a very large prominence of solar material that has erupted from the sun. And you can see the size comparison to the Earth. The sun is 109 times the diameter of the Earth. And so I've tried to scale it with a size comparison there. Let's look at the first four planets. Now these are collectively known as the terrestrial planets. And that means they're the Earth-like planets. Terrestrial comes from the Latin word terra, meaning earth or land. So I'm going to describe these planets and at the end of describing these four planets I'm going to, I will have put together a description of what how do we describe terrestrial planets and then in the next video we're going to look at the other planets called the Jovian or Jupiter-like planets and we're going to see how the terrestrial planets contrast with the Jovian planets. But for now, let's look at these Earth-like planets. They are Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. We'll start with Mercury, the closest planet to the sun. And I want you to think if you didn't know you were looking at Mercury, what would you think you're looking at? And most students say uh, the moon. It looks a lot like the moon. And yes, it does look a lot like the moon. It's cratered. There's no atmosphere on it. If you look at the bottom, you'll notice these black squares where the pictures are missing. Uh, and this is because this is the photograph. It's not one photograph, but rather a composite of many photographs put together from when a spacecraft went by it and the spacecraft just didn't get pictures of the other side. Some information about Mercury. Its composition is mostly rocks and metals. And in this class, we're not going to get into the specific geology, the specific minerals and metals and rocks, but we'll just leave it at that it is mostly rocks and metals. It has virtually no atmosphere. And that's important in understanding Mercury because um, most people assume that Mercury being the closest planet to the sun 
that it would be the hottest planet, and it does get very, very hot during the day. But because there's no atmosphere, when it's nighttime on Mercury, it's very cold. There's no atmosphere to lock in any of that heat. And so if it's nighttime where you're at on Mercury, it goes down to negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit. So 800 degrees Fahrenheit at day, negative 300 at night. It's a very small planet. In fact, it's the smallest planet in the solar system. Its mass is 5.5% of Earth's mass. And in size, its radius is 38% of Earth's radius. So again, Mercury is the smallest planet. Here is a picture taken from a backyard telescope of Mercury transiting across the sun. And so you see that little dot right there that is Mercury going across in front of the sun. The second planet from the sun is Venus. Venus was named after the Roman goddess of beauty. So they would see this bright, beautiful, shining thing in the sky and uh, associated it with the goddess of beauty. By the way, I forgot to mention uh, Mercury was named after the Roman messenger god. It was known since ancient times, Mercury relative to the other planets moves around on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis, moves around more quickly than the other planets. And so they figured uh, it was uh, associated with the messenger of the gods. Venus's composition, just like Mercury's, is mostly rocks and metals, and that's a common theme that we're going to see among all the terrestrial planets. It is the closest planet in size to Earth. It's like 95% of Earth's size. It has dense clouds that create a greenhouse effect, so atmospherically, it's very opposite to Mercury. Mercury has no atmosphere. Venus has a very thick atmosphere, which mostly it's carbon dioxide, and it locks in the heat very well. So rather, it, whether it is daytime or nighttime, it's about 880 degrees Fahrenheit at the surface on average. So Venus is the highest temperature of all the planets, the highest average temperature. In ancient times, it was known as the morning star or the evening star because Venus relative to Earth is close to the sun. You'll uh, always see it around sunrise or around sunset. You won't see it when the sun is high up in the sky, like at noon, because the sun's light will, uh, will blot out any light from anything else that's up there, except for the moon, so you wouldn't be able to see Venus. So when you do see Venus is, depending on which side of the sun it's on, it's either above the sun uh, before sunrise, or it's above the sun after sunset. And here is a picture of Venus transiting across the sun. You'll notice that it looks bigger than Mercury did because Venus is bigger than Mercury and also Venus is closer than Mercury. The third planet from the sun is Earth. Some important things to know about Earth. Earth is the only planet with abundant surface water to nurture life. When we get to the end of the semester, we're going to look at the search for planets outside of our solar system and the search for life beyond Earth. And one of the aspects of that is looking for what kind of planet is conducive to, uh, to allowing life. And so we'll look more at what is it about Earth that makes it so special. But one common, or uh, one, um, prominent aspect of Earth being allowed to have life is that it has abundant surface water, and it's the only planet that we know of that has that. It has perfect amounts of water vapor and carbon dioxide for a moderate greenhouse effect. So Mercury had no atmosphere that so that none of the heat was locked in. Venus has a very thick atmosphere, so too much heat gets locked in, but Earth is just right. So just the right amounts of those greenhouse gases for a moderate greenhouse effect that allows for life. Earth's composition is mostly rocks and metals. Now, when you look 
at a globe of the Earth, you see mostly water. It's more than 70% covered with water. And you might be inclined to think that Earth is a water planet, but actually uh, the water content of Earth is very little. Water makes up 0.023% of Earth's mass. Now a comparison is by mass. If you consider the mass of a watermelon, a large watermelon to be uh, the mass of the Earth, then the water would be about the mass of a dime. So the water on Earth is comparable to a dime compared to a watermelon. And this is not a planet, but while we're talking about the planet Earth, let's talk about the first moon that we come across as we work our way outward through the solar system. Mercury didn't have any moons, Venus didn't have any moons, but Earth has a moon known as the moon. Officially, its name is Luna. Here's a picture of the moon as taken by a student several years ago through the college's telescope. Some things to know about Earth's moon. It is the fourth largest moon in the solar system. Now, that's a little unusual that a relatively small planet, because when we get to the Jovian planets, we're going to see the planets are much bigger. They have many moons. They have large moons. But that such a relatively small planet has such a large moon. So again, it's the fourth largest moon in the solar system. It's the only place beyond Earth where man has visited. And maybe within the next few decades, we'll be able to send people back to the moon and maybe to Mars. But for now, it's the only place where people have been. The moon is 27% of Earth's radius, which means it's not that much smaller than the planet Mercury. Its period of revolution around the Earth is equal to its period of rotation. And that's because of a, a synchronous gravitational lock that Earth and the moon have on each other. It's 27.3 days. And what that means is that we always see the same face of the moon from Earth. The near side of the moon, the face that we always see, is there on the left with familiar craters and seas and what people since ancient times, I believe, have, known, have called the man in the moon. And we see the far side, which is very different without the seas and uh, many, many craters. And it's interesting to note that because we always see from Earth the near side of the moon, we didn't get to see the far side until with the Apollo project in the 1960s, we sent spacecraft to the other side of the moon to photograph it. Here is a size comparison of the Earth and the moon. The fourth planet we come to is Mars, the red planet. And here it is from different angles. You can see its polar ice caps made of uh, solid carbon dioxide. Here's a size comparison between the Earth and Mars. I like this picture, two worlds, one sun. So the picture on the left was taken from Earth, actually from France, and the picture on the right taken from Mars. Here are pictures of the rough terrain on Mars. And here is a picture from the movie The Martian, made to look like the planet Mars. Mars, just like the other terrestrial planets, its composition mostly rocks and metals. It has two very small moons, Phobos and Deimos. Mars is named after the Roman god of war. Its red color reminded them of blood and war. And uh, Phobos and Deimos, those moons, are actually from the Greek words for fear and terror, appropriate for the, uh, the god of war. Mars is known for its very large volcanoes that are inactive, canyons and other terrain features. And what you see in this picture is the largest mountain in the solar system. This is uh, called Mons Olympus. It is 
a height of 78,000 feet, which is three times taller than Mount Everest, which is Earth's highest mountain. It has polar ice caps that are made of frozen carbon dioxide. Here it's two moons, Phobos and Deimos. They're very small. You can see they're 16 miles across and 10 miles across, respectively. And so in the early formation, they didn't gravitationally, they weren't uh, able to pull themselves into nice spherical shapes that larger planets and moons have. You can see what looks like stretch marks across Phobos, and it's believed that uh, because of gravitational tug from Mars, that it's actually got a lot of tension on it, and it's possibly slowly getting ripped apart. And some astronomers think that maybe give it about a million years that it'll disintegrate, it'll just get ripped apart and perhaps be a ring system around Mars. Those are the terrestrial planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars putting together a list of common characteristics of terrestrial planets, and I do want you to remember these characteristics. Uh, first of all, they're easy to remember which ones are the terrestrial planets because they're the four closest planets to the sun. And in the next video, we'll look at the next four planets, the Jovian planets. They are relatively small. When we look at Jovian planets, we'll see that those are the large planets. They have high density. Density refers to the amount of mass per volume, and so they are higher density, being made of rocks and metals. They are, for the most part, solid rock. Now, there are some deviations from that. Earth has some liquid inside it, but generally speaking, uh, it's, it's rocky material, as opposed to when we look at the Jovian planets, we're going to see that those are gas planets. They have few, if any, moons. Remember, Mercury has zero moons, Venus has zero moons, Earth has one moon, and Mars has two moons. And they have no rings. When we get to the next video and look at Jovian planets, we're going to see a common feature of those is that they do have rings. That is the end of part two of chapter seven. Have a great day.